Okay, so uh, we've we've talked about um, osmosis diffusion, and we talked about um, uh, let's see, what did we start off talking about? Oh yeah, scientific method. So <laughs> sorry, it's getting late. Um, so there's a there's a section in, in unit five talking about cystic fibrosis, and uh, so I thought I'd take a little time and talk about that. Um, this will not be on the test, but I want to talk about it. To, it it'll give you a good example, a clinical example of what um, what happens with uh, when um, diffusion goes wrong. So, so cystic, cystic fibrosis is a uh, genetic disorder. Uh, it tends to affect the lungs and or other organs. It's named cystic fibrosis because you get cysts that form in the pancreas. Um, it's uh, but it significantly affects the, the GI tract as well. Um, the mutations are recessive, so you have to have two mutations, one uh, from each parent, one on each chromosome, to have uh, cystic fibrosis. And fibrosis just means, um, basically means uh, formation of scar tissue, okay? So you have cysts and you have scar tissue form, and when you have scar tissue form, the, the, the organ doesn't function anymore. So, so what happens is, uh, the idea that's been proposed is that there's a transport molecule in the cell surface that transports chloride ions, um, that are inside the cell um, and you uh, and can transport them outside. And so what happens is that this transport molecule, it's called the CFTR molecule, the cystic fibrosis transmembrane uh, conductance regulator uh, conductance because you can measure the uh, electrical uh, uh, potential across the membrane because these are negative charged, negative, negatively charged ions, chloride ions are negative charged. So, uh, so it, Faulty transport leads to accumulation of chloride ions inside the cell so that water enters the cell due to osmotic pressure. So you have osmosis of water in the cell trying to equalize the amount of chloride ions outside when one's inside. There's not much outside, not many chloride ions outside, lots inside, so water goes in the cell. The problem with this is that um, on cells that line, say, the, the lungs, that there's a there's the lining of the lungs, and there's a there's mucus that's that's formed and lays across here. So when you when you breathe, um, one the mucus uh, also helps your the, the alveoli, the little sacs, it helps the walls from sticking together. But also it traps uh, particles like virus or bacteria or dirt or whatever, so that it, uh, so and you can actually expel that back out out of your lungs when you cough. Um, but what happens is uh, that the water for the, for the mucus, mucus has water in it. So if you have less water, the mucus gets thicker. And so you start getting this thick mucus clogging up the, uh, the air passages, the alveoli and the upper uh, air passages. So that's what this is showing right here. This is showing the, the lung with mucus filling up the alveoli there and there, there, and also actually going up into these the air passages as well. So there's mucus is filling those. So when there's mucus in the way, you can't breathe. You can't get air, oxygen or carbon dioxide transport across there. So it makes it very difficult to breathe. So what you do is to loosen up this mucus, you actually will have um, part of the treatments you do is, is you'll have somebody, you know, pounding on the chest, on the, che on the chest and the back uh, for, for quite a long time. Um, the, for CF, uh, maximum life expectancy of a person is about 38 years uh, due to effects on lungs, um, effects on the lungs, liver, uh, pancreas, uh, and intestines. Um, you have um, char characteristic formation of cysts and scarring, fibrosis in the in the pancreas. So, so it's a it's a deadly disease, uh, and there's diff there's different severities of it. There's a uh, hundred different mutations, I think, um, 110 or 11. Uh, uh, mutations and uh, not all of them have a, quite a severe um, a, a clinical uh, expression as other ones do. Uh, the uh, some some uh, mutations don't transport chloride ions hardly at all, and others allow some transport of it. So it depends on the mutation that you have as to how um, severe your the disease is. Next slide. So uh, one person who has it is, uh, this is Boomer Esiason. He was a quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals and uh, is a, a sports uh, uh, caster um, on ESPN, does uh, NFL shows. This is his son uh, years ago, Gunner, uh, uh, who's still alive. Uh, Gunner uh, was a, um, uh, has cystic fibrosis. And um, so 
Uh, Gunner was, uh, when I was up in Cincinnati at the Children's Hospital up there, uh, Boomer, um, his son was born, and they were having a hard time figuring out what was going on with, on with him down at the hospitals in Kentucky. So I sent him to Children's Hospital, which is a very busy hospital and has a lot of experience and pulls from uh, as a large patient population that it pulls from. And they recognized immediately that Gunner had cystic fibrosis. So uh, Boomer was, was very grateful to the Children's Hospital for uh, early you know, diagnosis and uh, help with treatments and all that. So they um, uh, he actually, you know, uh, did a lot of uh, support for Children's Hospital and helping them raise money. Um, anyway, um, so the respiratory signs that you see with this, you have a persistent cough in, in as being kids. They'll be wheezing, breathlessness, exercise intolerance, uh, repeated lung infections, um, inflamed nasal passages, stuffy nose. You have digestive signs. Uh, you um, it, mucus can block tubes that carry the digestive enzymes from your pancreas to the small intestine. Um, the um, intestines aren't able to completely break down, and then you can't absorb the food you eat. Then you can't absorb the nutrients you eat. So you have uh, foul-smelling, greasy stools, poor weight gain and growth because you can't, you're not absorbing food as well. Intestinal blockage, particularly newborns, you have meconium uh, ileus, and um, severe constipation. So there's all kinds of things that uh, signs that uh, that come. Also, uh, if you uh, you can also taste it if you if you kiss, you know you. Kiss, kiss the child. A lot of times they'll tell they'll they'll um, it'll be salty on their skin when you're not expecting that. Okay. Next slide. Organs infected, <clears throat> sinuses, lungs, skin, liver, pancreas, intestines, uh, reproductive organs as well. There's uh, complications down there. Anything that's like t has tubules in it uh, or passageways, uh, you have you have problems with the, with those because the Linings uh, don't work as quite like they're supposed to. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Here's just another picture of the same thing. So you have small airways are obstructed, so you get recurrent respiratory um, infections, except excessively salty sweat, uh, pancreatic insufficiency, um, you have uh, in malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins, uh, so you can have uh, cystic fibrosis related diabetes. Uh, cirrhosis, liver, gallstones, hepatic, uh, steatosis, uh, meconium ileus. You have distal, meaning far end of intestinal obstruction, uh, I mean uh, severe constipation. Um, you have uh, colono colono colonopathy. <laughs> Sorry. So you have uh, fibrosis of the colon in addition to this, which, which worsens the uh, constipation. So, and then you have uh, a lot of times you'll have uh, absence of the, of the vas deferens. Um, so, um, anyway, all right, next slide. Uh, this is just a, a cross section showing if it's cyst in cystic fibrosis, the thicker mucus layer, layer versus this is healthy over here on the left, thinner, a thinner mucus layer and a uh, wider air passage as well. Next slide. Just another slide showing the uh, thicker mucus layer. And you have, it can often have uh, bacterial um, accumulation and infection in there, in there. Okay, next slide. So here's the uh, picture uh, diagram of the cystic fibrosis protein, where normally it's uh, able to pump out the chloride ions. So they, they're in here and they go flying out into the uh, exterior of the cell. However, the defective ones like this one and this one, <clears throat> They aren't transporting chloride ions, so you get a thickened bunch of mucus here because you don't have because water um, tries to go into the water goes into the cell to try to equalize this chloride uh, ion concentration gradient on, on either side and leaving so water leaving the mucus makes it thicker. Next slide. Um, here's a, a cross section through a sweat gland duct, and you have the CFTR protein here. So this would be the inside of the duct, or the lumen. This is inside the duct. So you have the, the duct, and so this would be the part where sweat comes out and goes onto the sur surface of the skin. This is the interstitium, or uh, inside the tissues, between the cells and the tissue. So the CFTR is, uh, is supposed to be uh, bringing chloride ions into the cell and sodium Ions are also coming in from a different transporter, but, um, and so normally that's what happens. In this case, uh, chloride ions are not brought in 
they aren't able to be transported in, in this case, or across the sorry across the cell in, into the from the in, from the lumen of the sweat gland into the interstitial fluid. So you have an accumulation of chloride ions out here, which makes it uh, salty out, outside. So you secrete that out, um, excrete that out onto the surface of your skin, and you have um, a salty uh, tasting sweat. So that's why uh, little babies, you can if you kiss them and they're real salty, you're like, oh, maybe there's something here. So uh, there's also often have a smell to them as well from the uh, greasy stools and all that. So anyway, uh, next slide. <clears throat> So the CFTR, just so it's a huge protein, it's 189,000 base pairs approximately, has 1,480 amino acids. Um, the gene is extremely large, so the most common mutations are these uh, five right here. This delta uh, F508 is deletion of uh, phenylalanine at position 508. This is a um, glycine uh, changed to a stop or nonsense codon at position 542. This is a glycine changed to a aspartic acid, position 551. This is arginine changed to lysine at position 1303. And this is a tryptophan changed to a stop nonsense codon at position 1282. And so these letters are W is the abbreviation for tryptophan, 1282 is the um, position in the gene, and X means a stop codon. So it means that you, that you don't produce um, a protein off that off, off of that uh, messenger RNA. Uh, so here's here's a, a a crude diagram of the protein structure, just showing its transmembrane. It goes it goes across, then comes back, and goes across, and comes back and up and down. Okay. And then there's then it goes down here. There's parts down here, and then it goes back up and up and down again. And another little piece that's inside the cell. So so that's the um, the Overall, let's see if I can get rid of that. Okay, so that's the um, kind of a, a laid out diagram of the, of the protein. It actually is a is kind of a cone or a chain. It's a channel shape, so that you can pass chloride ions, you know, through through this uh, uh, through the channel. <clears throat> and so the next slide shows that. Next slide. So here's the channel, and you can see chloride ions going up and coming out there. And it goes across the cell membrane, so it's a transmembrane protein. Okay, so um, and due to here's the phenylalanine delta 508 mutation. Uh, it's where the deletion of phenylalanine is right there. So so the protein just doesn't work quite right. Okay, so that's uh, cystic fibrosis. Transmembrane conductance regulator, CFTR protein in the plasma membrane. Next slide. So here's another uh, more complicated diagram. Uh, you'll talk about these in, in your lecture class. You'll talk about proteins are made up of what are called alpha helices, and that's what this, that thing there is. That's an alpha helix. So alpha helix. And multiple of them are called alpha Helices, okay. Proteins are generally uh, put in two categories. Either, either they make alpha helix structure or a beta pleated beta pleated sheet. We'll talk about that later. And so beta pleated sheet and a blade. And so beta pleated sheet uh, is more like this. Oh, oh, oh. I don't like that. So, so it's more of a sheet-like structure. So it's more flatter and, and a wide, flat thing. Alpha helix makes more of a, a like a string. So, like your hair is made out of alpha helix, uh, alpha helical proteins. Okay. So that's what the CFTR protein looks like in a um, complicated diagram with alpha helical um, domain diagram. Next slide. <clears throat> so anyway. Here's uh, the, the family now. So here's uh, Boomer over here on the right and Gunner on the left. And Gunner is uh, actively involved in cystic fibrosis uh, research and, um, and raising money for that. So, and they're uh, managing, uh, he's managing the disease uh, as best he can. So next slide. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is cell division. So cell division and the 
so our somatic cell division and the cell cycle. Somatic meaning soma means body. So it means somatic means uh, body cell division. So we're not going to talk about the um, germ cells, the sperm and eggs uh, in, in this. Uh, that would be meiosis. So we're going to talk about somatic cell division, which is called mitosis. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about the two major phases, the phases of cell division. There's interphase and mitosis. <clears throat> interphase is a long phase. Mitosis is very short. Interphase has three phases, some called G1, S, and G2. S is here, and that's where DNA is replicated. Okay, G1 is over here on the left. This is G1 phase, and over here is G2 phase. Then there's another phase, it's called, followed by mitosis, and that's what this phase is down here. Here's the mitosis phase with this arrow, right? So. So what happened, what, uh, in early days of cell biology, they were studying things, and you could see cells when they went into mitosis because they would be active. You would see the chromosomes line up, the cell would pinch in, and two cells would come apart. Okay, So you, would, you knew stuff happened then, and you could also use uh, radioactive tracers, and you could find out that things were going on in the S phase as well. right? You, and you could, uh, you could throw uh, radioactive nucleotides in there, and they would be taken up and used during the S phase. So you knew something was going on in that phase, in the S phase as well as the M phase, the mitotic phase. But you didn't know what was going on on this left phase, this G1 over here, or G2 over here. Okay, So what they, what they called them originally were the gap phases, just because they're like, oh, nothing's going on. Okay, The cell's dividing, it's making DNA, but these other two phases, we don't know what's going on. So we'll call it, call it the gap phase. So G1 is the phase immediately after my, mitosis, and that's where you have, after mitosis, you've, in, in DNA synthesis, you create a duplicate, a duplicate um, amount of DNA, you duplicate your DNA, you create double the amount of DNA in the cell. And then in mitosis, you take half of that and take one cell and the other half and take the other cell. Okay, so you bring your uh, amount of DNA back down. So G1 is the first phase, and it means that you have, have the, the, um, the uh, singular amount of DNA, the, the uh, the one amount of DNA. And over here, G2, you have double the amount of DNA, which occurs after uh, after DNA synthesis in, in the S phase. So this whole thing from here all the way around is, that's all interphase. It's all that. Okay. And mitosis is just this little part down here. Okay. So in these phases for cells that are growing in cell culture, G1 is about eight to 10 hours maybe, S phase will be six to eight hours, and uh, synthesizing DNA, the G2 phase is four to six hours, and mitosis is about an, is maybe an hour. So it, it goes pretty fast, mitosis does. <clears throat> There's also another phase that can happen. In G1, the cell can actually pop out, it's called, we call it popping out of G1. Uh, it can actually go out of G1, it can actually come back in, and this little, popping out is called G0, where the cell becomes what we call quiescent. It is metabolizing and doing things and doing all its cell functions. It's just not going through the DNA synthesis and preparing to make more cells. And this happens quite a bit in your body. You'll have cells that are made, and then they just sit there and they do their stuff. Because you don't need to be dividing and making cells like all the time in every single tissue. So all cells don't need to be, be trying to divide. So they you know, they have a, need a bunch of them doing, just basically doing their job. So um, let's see. So um, so that's interphase versus mitosis and G1, G, G2, and G0. So G1, S phase, G2, my, uh, M phase. And uh, let's see. Then you start over in G1 phase. And G1, you can go into G0. So... Mitosis has two main stages, uh, the nuclear division stage and a cytokinesis stage where you divide the cytoplasm. So first you divide the nucleus, so you have the cell, the nucleus inside. So first you, you break down the nucleus and the chromosomes divide and they move to the sides of the cell and then the cell so it goes and it pinches in around, uh, around and, so it, and then it pulls apart. And so the nucleus will be in each cell, will reform in each cell and you have DNA, the same amount of DNA in each uh, daughter cell. They're called daughter cells. 
um, D A U H called daughter cells after cytokinesis. So, so one cell goes to two daughter cells. Okay, nuclear division has four phases. These phases are called prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And you can remember that uh, using the acronym PMAT or pass my anatomy test if you want to remember with a phrase. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Telophase is the end, prophase is the beginning, and so we're going to go through what those uh, look like. And so you have, and this was, uh, things look like two eyeballs, that's the two daughter cells, that's one, there's two, and over here behind my head is the sing is there's a single cell way, way back in there, okay? So, next slide. So here's the phase of the cell cycle. So we talked about interphase, which so you have this is G1 S, G1 S and G2, and G G1 can go. You can go out to G0 if you want that. It's supposed to be a G. Okay. Mitosis. You have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, those are four phases of mitosis. And mitosis is nuclear division, so you have division of the genetic material. In prophase, the nucleolus and nuclear membrane disappear. Chromatin, the DNA starts condensing into chromosomes. And centrioles move to opposite poles, and the spindle, fires, spindle fibers start forming. In metaphase, the chromosomes uh, all line up at the, in the middle of the cell at what's called the metaphasal plate. And spindle fire fibers, so they all line up in the middle, and spindle fibers from the ends ends of the cell attach to those chromosomes. So you have these uh, the chromosomes line up at the metaphasal plate. So think about metaphase as middle, M, middle, okay? So chromosomes are in the middle. And then anaphase, the chromosomes have doubled, so you have what are called two chromatids. And so in anaphase, you have oh, anaphase, so you have a chromosome that has as a chromatid and a chromatid. And then, at, so that's in G1. Go through S, this becomes doubled like this. Okay? So what happens in anaphase is that spindle fibers here and spindle fibers here, so that'd be S, this would be G2, and then, um, Essentially, it doesn't look like this in G1 or S. I'm showing condensed one because this is what it would look like at mitosis. So you have a spindle fiber here uh, attaching to the centromere, okay, there, and here. And it starts pulling these chromosomes apart by the centromeres. Okay, so anaphase, you'll see these, the centromeres are being pulled and the, the ends of the chromosomes are dangling behind. Okay, we'll see that in here in a second. And then telophase, I got some pictures. And telophase... Um, it says in this chart the cell reverses the prophase activity. Um, really, yeah, so the, the, the chromosomes go to the far end of the pole, the nuclear membrane starts forming back around them, the chromosomes um, um, relax and become uncondensed, and, uh, and they, they're, able, they're able to start doing their stuff and making, uh, as you make RNA off, off of them again. Then you have cytokinesis occurring after tele, uh, telophase, and technically, it actually overlaps a little bit with telophase. You haven't completed, complete, completely finished telophase before the cell starts pinching in, so they do overlap uh, to, a, to an extent. And you end up going from one cell here with a nucleus to, oops, down to two cells, each with a nucleus. Okay. Those are different sizes. Sorry about that. Uh, so they should be they should be almost identical sizes. Okay. Next slide. So here are the stages of um, of mitosis. Okay. Figure six five six out of your book. This is mitosis. Well, starting here. Sorry. So <clears throat> this is this right here is interphase. So you have a very distinct. Um, sorry, you have a very distinct nuclear membrane. Let me take that away because um, 
because I didn't want to point from metaphase there. So you have a plasma membrane, and you have a very distinct nuclear membrane. It's supposed to be an N. Okay, so it's, and then when you go to prophase, the nuclear membrane starts breaking down. Okay, centrioles are here. Okay, here's the centriole. And you start seeing some fibers kind of form across here, right? Then in metaphase, chromosomes are all nicely lined up in the middle here. The centrioles are starting to move towards the pole, and you got fibers are starting to attach to these chromosomes. Okay, next slide. So in metaphase, this is metaphase here. This is prophase. So in metaphase, you have the chromosomes are in the middle of the cell. Next slide. Then in anaphase, you can see the, the centromeres are being pulled and the little chromatids are dangling behind. And you can see that right here. There's the chromatids dangling behind. And you see the spindle has formed. So the spindle fibers are all, the, all out there and they're also attaching around the cell too, holding on. Because it has to hold on to the wall, to the wall of the cell to pull these, these uh, um, chromosomes towards it. So this is anaphase. And then telophase is here. And you'll notice that the chromosomes are have gone to the other pole of the cell. The cell has started to pinch in here. It's not completely pinched in, but it started to pinch in. This would be really late in, in telophase and, and um, uh, in early in cytokinesis here. And then, so but telophase uh, generally is considered starting when the cell starts to pinch in. And then uh, after cytokinesis, after cytokinesis, you have two daughter cells. Okay, so that's uh, that's mitosis. That's the whole cell cycle there. So from interphase all the way through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and cytokinesis into two daughter cells. And then those two daughter cells can go on and do the same thing. And that's what happens when you're uh, when the uh, sperm first fertilizes the egg. Um, the fertilized egg just starts dividing and divide, 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 and you have have this uh, very rapid set of cell divisions that occurs um, until um, until the um, and it slows down a little bit as as it develops, but uh, still for the for the nine months that you're developing in the womb, there's a lot of cell division that's occurring um, as you're growing. Next slide. So here's a, a picture of it all on a single slide. So here's interphase down here with uh, G1, S, and G2. And we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So you can see the um, chromatin um, chromosomes are forming, plasma membranes there. You see the nuclear membrane is breaking down, breaks down. Over here, you have um, in metaphase, you have the chromosomes are all in the well, chromosomes are in the middle at the metaphasal at metaphasal plate. Then we have anaphase where the chromosomes are starting to be pulled away from the middle up towards the edges. So that's anaphase there. And then telophase, um, the, the chromosomes have been pulled far apart and the cell is starting to pinch in, as you can see right there. Okay. So, and then, then after that, cytokinesis occurs and you're back to interphase. Next slide. So, okay. So uh, next time we're going to talk about histology. We're talking about tissues. So we're talking about the cells that make up different tissues, what they look like. And so you're going to learn all those next time. So, I went over these slides before, and I probably should have stuck this in this lecture, but um, this is a nice introduction to, but you've seen these, and I'll go, I'll go back over them real quick uh, as an introduction to next time. Okay, next slide. So we talked about skeletal muscle and the striations in skeletal muscle there, so it's really easy to tell what skeletal muscle looks like because it has these stripes across it. As you can see, those stripes are called striations. And you can also see things like 
right there. This dark blobs there and there. Those are all, each one of those is nucleus. Those are all nuclei. Then we talked about um, another type of cell, pseudostratified ciliated col columnar epithelial cells in the trachea. And so there's the cilia is, is there. There's the cilia. So this, so the dark part there, that's the um, the interior of the trachea, okay. And then these are the cells. So that would be a nucleus there. There's a nucleus. Here's a nucleus. 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 All those roundish things are all. That's all a nucleus. Those are all nuclei. There. 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 So. And then over here, uh, we have simple columnar epithelial cells, uh, like in the intestine. And so that right there is a um, is your is your microvilli sticking off the top of these cells. So it's giving you more surface area inside the um, intestine, so you can absorb more food all the way around there. And these are nuclei here, there, and there. There, every single one of those, these roundish things here, that's the nucleus there. So here's another one, here's another one. Okay, so, and uh, th these are actually, these cells, these are actually cells here too. That's called, actually called a goblet cell. And it actually makes mucus. So you secrete mucus into your intestine so the food can move more easily down, slide down the intestine a little bit more easily. Okay, um, next slide. So we talk about sperm cells, talk about the, uh, the head of the sperm, that's the head, and the flagella, flagellum. Okay, and the head is where the DNA is, is, is kept. Red blood cells, white blood cells, white blood cell there, so that's a white blood cell. This is a red blood cell, RBC. This is a platelet, okay, and that's a platelet there. There's a couple of platelets there, just so you get a good idea. Here's a red blood cell. So just in case you um, missed me drawing a line there. And then the motor neuron, this is the body, so that's the... Oops, we already have an arrow pointing to that. Sorry about that. So, so this is the cell body here, or the or the soma. And then we have dendrites, uh, processes. We have dendrites and one axon. So. I, all I want to do is there's lots of different cell shapes um, and features associated with each cell so that we're going to, you can categorize cells into different categories based on their cell shape and uh, where they are and, and what they do. So, and so each, and cells are specialized in your body. So everyone has a different function. And so the, none of them can survive by themselves. They all, all your cells in your body rely on all the other cells in your body for, um, to provide uh, the environment to live and to do the, do the things that you need to do. So, um, anyway, so next time we're going to talk about uh, tissues and we're going to talk about all these tissues and we're going to categorize, categorize them and, and tell you, uh, about all those. And so there's a whole bunch of those and that'll be a long lecture. Um, it's a lot of material. So the pictures are on, on your book. So I would advise you to go through and look at the pictures ahead of time. Um, and uh, familiar, familiarize yourself with them before we get go to class, before you um, before you watch the lecture. Sorry, before you go to class. I, I still think we're in person. I don't know how I'm doing this. So, anyway, um, let's see. If you have any questions, uh, give me a shout. And I believe that's it. So, bye.